Good morning, it's Monday, June 16th, 2014, and this is this week's garden update. We're starting over here, the sea of green. These are all cucurbits. Um, over here are the patty pan squash, and over the last week they have gone completely crazy. We have harvested five, ten, at least 15. Uh, we've been picking every day. They grow very quickly. So look down in there. You can see there's one. We'll pick that probably in a day or two. That one pretty much has been picked clean because we had a bunch that were ripe on there. Uh, there's one back there, a little one. There's one over there. I'm not sure if you can see that one. Um, the zucchini, the same thing. I probably have four in the fridge right now. We've eaten a bunch. There's a good size one back there. We'll probably pick that one either later today or tomorrow. And then finally the Rogosa Friulana yellow squash have come in. We've picked one or two of those. I've got one or two to pick today and tomorrow. They are warty. They are really good. We sliced one and ate it raw and it had a, almost a cucumber taste. It was really, really good. There's one there. Uh, where are you? A big one right there. So summer squash are doing great. I'm gonna take you over here to the other side and we're gonna check out the pumpkins. Okay, so here are the pumpkins. <laughs> They've gone crazy. They've gone into the summer squash. They've gone into the corn. And we have, I think, one, two, three, four, maybe five pumpkins right now that I see growing. There's one. Still small, but growing. These are New England sugar pies. There's one. All in the grass, of course. Uh, there's one there. That might be a new one that I've just seen. And I think the first Jaredel pumpkin is here. This doesn't have the same shape as the others. I think that's a Jaredel. There are a few more up in there. Um, pretty soon I want to do a video on cooking squash blossoms because we have a bunch and they're just beautiful. Huge. See bees down in there. All right, let's take a look at the winter squash. They've really taken off since the last update too. You can see there's one. I've got a big one right there. There's two on that plant. And several in here so I'm really excited about those and my buttercup have gone crazy too I think I showed you the last update it was a very very little one smaller than a golf ball you can see there it is it's my finger so it's pretty good size really getting there I've got another one started there see that I can't see the screen because of the sun but there's one there another one there so really happy with the squash the cucumbers are still ugly but they are producing there's a cucumber there sorry about the camera angles there's one there there are several other several others there I planted another small hill that's getting started there. We actually picked one pickling cucumber off this the other day. It was really good, but you can see here. There's one. Another one over there. So we're slowly starting to get cucumbers. Uh, let's take a look at the peppers. The tallest plants are the 
red Marconi. You can see we're starting to get good size. They're going to get a lot bigger than that before they turn red, but we're getting started. Um, down here, these are the Islander peppers, and you can see they're green right now, but they've got little specks, little rashes of purple. And I would say by tomorrow, they're all going to be purple. I'll try to show you some examples in a second. There's the albino. So the albinos grow upside down, if you noticed. It's weird. Then this weekend, this is kind of the sad story. This weekend we came out and did a lot of weeding. And I don't know what happened. I don't know if I pulled up a weed with roots close to the plant. I don't know what happened. I mean, I've checked the plant out. I don't know. But this was, I don't think this is going to make it. The next day I came out and it was all droopy. I hope it doesn't have uh, any kind of fungal bacteria. Oh, look. There's another pumpkin in there. Sorry. Uh, I'm going to talk about that with my tomatoes. But I don't think so. I don't know if you can see it. The light's probably not going to show it correctly. But that's a little purple bell pepper. I'm afraid we're going to lose them. So I don't know. I'm going to keep watering and hope. Jalapenos. We've already picked a couple dozen from these. And then these guys are super tall too. And these are the Tabascos. Nothing on them yet. Okra are uh, up to my knees. Alright, let's talk tomatoes. If you watched the last update I did, you'll remember... Um, I had some wilting and some yellowing. It started on this tomato plant here. The plant was wilted and lots of yellow. And then it spread to a plant that was here. And I cut all the yellow and all the wilt off this one. And I thought I did the same thing with this one. This one just didn't make it. I went ahead and pulled it out yesterday. The same thing is starting to happen on this plant. And I looked up and it looked like it could be one of maybe two bacterial, fungal diseases in the dirt. Um, I can't remember the name right now, but so I'm kind of worried. Um, I'm going to have to come out here and do some more cutting today. I'm going to try to save that tomato. And I'm worried it's going to come on to the rest of these plants. I'll show you in a minute. But these are the Pantano Romanesco. Wait, wait, wait. No, these are the Hungarian hearts here. All right, the other tomatoes have some yellowing on them. I mean, I think that's pretty normal. The videos I see of other people's tend to have yellowing on them too, especially with the rain that we've had. I've been trying to keep it cut. Um, so I don't have a problem with a little bit of yellow. The problem is, let me take you over here. I'm starting to see some wilt over here. Like that. And once again, I don't know if it's the same disease or we did some weeding and got the hoe out here. And I don't know if we got the hoe a little too deep and broke into some weeds or into some uh, roots. And that's causing some of the wilt. I don't know. I'm hoping that's what it is. I don't want to lose my tomatoes. We've got a lot, we, do, we haven't gotten any ripe tomatoes yet. Lots of uh, green ones that are getting bigger. But they're, they seem a little bit slow this year. <clears throat> beans, we've been getting lots of beans. That's the Roma 2. Uh, I don't have any really big ones on here because I just picked them yesterday, but that's a little short one, and that's about how fat we let them get. So beans are there. These are the uh, Blue Lake Bush. We've been getting some of those too. They're a little bit later than the Romas. Here are my pole beans. These two teepees are Kentucky Wonder. They've reached the top and beyond of the teepee. No blooms yet. I give them maybe a week before they start doing that. These are the Judiones, which I still need to do a video on, but uh, they're doing well too. All right, let's go take a look at the corn. All right, here's the Jerry Peterson blue corn. It is tall now. I would say six, seven and a half feet tall. 
tasseling um, of pollen. You can see we have lots of corn. Some of the, not all stalks have corn yet, but some of the stalks have two with lots of silk. Um, I've done some experimenting and I've hand pollinated some. And on the ones that I did, I try to cut the tassels back a little bit so I could see the difference. Like that's one that I hand pollinated. There's an ear, uh, two ears on one stalk. Um, the supports that we put up have really seemed to help, so that's good. But they're nice and tall. Really looks like summer back here now. The sweet corn is doing great too, and I did not touch it after it blew down after the storm, and it did right itself, so I know better now than to freak out and come out here. Uh, there's a couple that are laying over there, I think the cat or something got in there, but I'm going to leave them alone. They really are, they're really fine. So those are coming along. Eggplant. Plants are growing a lot, lots of blossoms on these regular eggplant, the Black Beauty eggplant. No fruit yet. Let me take you over here and show you the Ichabon eggplant. We've already harvested two, and I've got a bunch over here that will be ready in a few days. There's one. You can see two there, with another small one back there. Two there. Little baby guy there. So these are doing great. Tomatillos, we're finally getting some big husks. I don't know if there's anything going on inside there, but... Patio tomatoes. I lied, we did get a tomato yesterday. We got <laughs> one cherry tomato. There are a couple more there ready to go. The barrage is getting ready to bloom. Mint's doing well. And the bottle gourds have bloomed. You can see a baby one there that was pollinated yesterday. So there are a few of those on there. And uh, I'll show you the sunflowers next. All right, here we are with the sunflowers, regular flowers there, sunflowers here. Some are getting taller than others. I think they've got still a ways to go. Um, and then we have some over here by the chicken coop that are getting pretty tall. So that's exciting. Some flowers here and here. And then I wanna show you what's going on over here. One of the guys that I subscribe to, Jay Walker, if you don't subscribe to him, do, because he's got an awesome channel. Had a really cool video on making um, homemade mustard, and he grew a bunch of mustard, so that inspired me to get some mustard planted. So I didn't plant, obviously, as much as he has, but I did put some mustard in here, and I put some mustard in the herb bed. Um, sorry. And uh, so hopefully we'll have some mustard for greens, and then also to use to let it go to seed and make some homemade mustard. Then the herb bed here is doing all right. Got some more mustard down in here coming along. Rhubarb, I'll probably pick me some more rhubarb here in a little while. And that's about it for this week. So lots of growth. Worried about my tomatoes. If you've got any information or you can help me at all, let me know. Thanks, have a good week.